What's up, Cougs? Welcome back to another episode of Coog Talk, where we discuss sports updates, hot takes, opinions, and more. Today, I'm here with Manav and Kenneth, and we'll be discussing UH football. How do you guys feel about the coaching adjustments and the changes this season? Um, I like, honestly, I like the addition of Willie Fritz. Uh, he had a lot of success at Tulane. Um, he brought some of his former players with him to UH. I think um, he's trying to build a program. You know, we are new to the Big 12. So um, I just think give him a couple years, you know, getting the, he's getting talent out of the city of Houston. So we'll get more prospects, uh, players at the portal, things like that. But as of right now, I, you know, we, we can't really put any, uh, any judgments on Willie Fritz. I just still think it's too early. Yeah, you know, I definitely agree. I think one of the reasons why they got Willie Fritz was because of um, his recruiting. And he's done a lot of coaching here. He has a lot of experience in Texas. So he's been able to use his connections to really get some good transfers. This uh, transfer class was fourth in the Big 12 uh, this past year, and they're right in the middle um, for 2025. So that was what was, I think, a big problem under Dan Holberson. And I think that's a big um, focus for UH football program right now. Um, currently, um, like Ken said, it's a little too early to see, um, you know, based on the performance, how he's done, but um, this team, Defensively, they're a pretty good team. I think Sherwood, as defensive coordinator, has done a good job. Um, they're able to limit Oklahoma. And um, I think this offense is what's really making things um, really difficult for this team. Um, a lot of talk about the quarterback controversy between Donovan Smith and, and Zion Chris. Both of them will be starting this week. Donovan will get the start. But um, I think with him, it's he has all the physical traits, but he can't really, um, the accuracy is just not there for him right now. So we'll see. I mean, I like the defense. Maybe they sneak in a couple wins this year. I think their last game at home against Baylor is a good opportunity. But, you know, it, it's a work in progress here for U.S. football right now. Yeah, I do agree. Um, Donovan Smith, I do like Donovan Smith as an athlete. Yeah. I think he possesses the talent and physical traits to be a great quarterback. Mm. But um, like you said, I think it's more so the mental side of things with Donovan. Uh, we will see some Zeon Chris, so we can see mm -hmm. what, he can, what, he'll be, what, what he'll be able to do. Um, but... Just, uh, yeah, like you said, the offense, um, there's line issues. Um, they did lose their top receivers from last mm -hmm. year, Matthew Golden and Sam Golden. Brown. Yeah. Um, and then they, they lost, uh, what was it, Patrick Paul to the NFL draft. Right. So, but like, like I said, you know, we'll be, uh, Willie Fritz, I think he'll be able to build us into a good, mm -hmm. good competitive program uh, as the years progress. Yeah, definitely. I think um, offensive coordinator-wise, I feel like they could do a better job in terms of planning out plays, and I feel like this offense is missing a little bit. I feel like they can do some things on offense, but I, I think the play, play calling um, is is a big part of it as well. But um, we'll see. Hopefully, they can sneak in a few wins this year. Yeah, speaking with the offensive coordinator, I think that we should try to throw in some more, say, play actions. Mm -hmm. But like that does require some protection up front, which yeah. is currently lacking. Right. Um, but yeah, just play action. Uh, just more long developing throws or right. long developing plays, I should say. Um, I think we should, we, we're kind of too run heavy at the moment. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, going on from last year. We were very run heavy last year. Um, I don't know. I think just with our running game, I, I would like to see the ball in Donovan Smith's hands more. If he's, if he's the quarterback, um, we should put the ball in his hands and not rely on the run so much. Yeah, and um, I've got to agree with both of you, uh, points you guys made. I think this will be a process. You know, we are new to the Big 12, um, new head coach, new players. It, it, it's not going to be instant, but I do see flashes of, of change mm -hmm. and growth from the last season. And although there are key things like quarterback adjustments, um, play calling that, that do need a lot of work, uh, I think we're on our way uh, within the next few years in the Big 12. But on the topic of football, I'd actually like to talk about the NFL. How do you guys feel about that? Um, the young quarterbacks, we have people like Caleb Williams who are um, not necessarily struggling playing-wise, but kind of finding their way in the NFL. I don't know if you guys saw the moment with uh, C.J. Stroud where they exchanged yeah, the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, how do you guys feel about that? Uh, I'll let Manal go first on that one. Yeah, you know, I think talking about C.J. Stroud, I think you know, he was just trying to be a good guy and give advice. I, I don't know if Caleb really wanted to listen to him at that moment, but 
Um, talking about the Texans, I think we'll see, man. I feel like great 2-0 start, first time since 2016 that they started 2-0. Um, close game against Chicago. Ideally, I would have liked them to win that game a little bit better. Um, came down to the defense getting a stop and, and pretty good win against um, the Colts. But just nothing went right for them against the Minnesota Vikings that game. Was just not theirs from the start. Had a tipped interception against CJ and uh, Lirmi Tunsil. He needs to get it together. Too many false starts um, for him. I thought CJ Stroud, he's played good. He hasn't had his great game yet. So I feel like the Texans are only going to get better. And I think they can be a top threat in the AFC if they keep developing. You see Nico Collins, I think he's a top 10 receiver um, in the league right now. Would love to see Tang Dell, um, who went to UH, um, get more involved here. Um, but I think speaking of the other Dallas team, I mean, not the Dallas team, but the Tex Texas team, the Cowboys, a um, couple of things with them. I feel like they haven't been looking good at home. They, their defense has been getting um, crushed recently um, by the Saints, by the Ravens. They're able to make it close um, at the end in the fourth, but I um, feel like two big contracts, CeeDee Lamb, Dak Prescott, feel like they could have signed them a bit earlier. That way you won't have to spend so much on them. Now they really are limited in terms of what they can upgrade. I feel like that team has gotten worse. Um, I don't think everything's on Dak Prescott to me. He's still a top 10 quarterback. Um, I think they just got to play better as a whole. And then my last point is about the young quarterbacks that we were talking about. I think Jaden Daniels really impressed with him. And, and the way he's been playing looked really good on Monday Night Football. Um, I think Caleb Williams has some good potential, seen some some good things with him, just needs to continue to develop um, in his case. And uh, as for Bryce Young, I think it's time for him to kind of sit on the bench, learn from Andy Dalton. Um, and Panthers, you know, we'll see what they can do. Andy Dalton definitely made them look a little bit better. Um, so, so we'll see a lot of interesting storylines this year in the NFL. Yeah, just speaking on, um Go back to the Cowboys, uh, in terms of the contract, um, there is an impending extension coming from Michael Parsons, of course, so that puts them in, uh, uh, gives them less leeway in terms of cap space. Mm -hmm. um, Caleb, the little Caleb Williams and uh, C.A. Stroud interaction, people thought, a lot of people thought that C.A. Stroud was trying to little bro Caleb. <laughs> um, I think he was just, just trying to give him some advice, because yeah. I think Caleb, I'm not Caleb, C.J. Stroud has kind of um, taken on that veteran role early on, mm -hmm. he's only in year two. But he is kind of real respected around the, around the league just for his uh, early success. Um, and going back to the Texans, um, they they kind of I, I would say right now just their expectations they kind of have been given high expectations just from what they did last year. And then they they uh, added some weapons this offseason: Danielle Hunter, uh, Stephon Diggs, Joe Mixon. Um, in my opinion, I would like to see the ball in C.J. Stroud's hands more, uh, and um, in terms of or instead of giving it in the run game. But I think that's more of a you know philosophical thing that Demico Ryan wants to run. Mm -hmm. um, just what's your thoughts on that? Do you think like CJ Stroud should have the ball in his hands more, or or you think like you know what they're doing right now is, is sustainable? I think Joe Mixon had a great game against the Colts. I think that's really what um, the Texans want to do in that aspect. I feel like they want to have some balance. Last year, there were a lot of times where CJ just you know had to really take take over, and uh, I think they want Joe Mixon to be able to do that. Hopefully. Um, we'll see him back soon, um, but I think they, they just want to balance between run and, and pass and you know play action should become a good thing for, uh, for CJ as well. And then also do you think if you have a talent like a CJ Stroud who can put the ball in the air, get it to his guys, is there some time where okay CJ has to have the ball in his hands more and like how you know obviously that's hard to balance so mm -hmm. do you think the Texans will be able to figure out something like okay CJ you can go ahead and Put the ball in the air, or now we're going to hand it to Joe Mixon. Yeah, I feel like you know at the end of at the end of halves where you know the time is running short. Um, otherwise, I feel like they want to establish the run and then you know build the pass off of that. So um, you know if it's if they're behind, if you know at the end of each quarter, or if if they need CJ to air it out, then yeah, he's more than capable of doing it. Okay, and I also uh, talk about Ravens 0-2. Mm, yeah. They went to Jerry World and got a win. Um, do you, is there con some concern about the Baltimore Ravens or do you think they'll, they'll be all right? Yeah, I feel like they're finding their groove. I mean, it's always tough to beat the Chiefs and that Raiders game was not good for them, but get a win in Dallas and I think they're going to be a good team in the AFC um, and, and make it close with the Chiefs as well. And 
I do want to talk a little bit about the Chiefs. We've seen them. Mahomes has not played that great right now. Five touchdowns, four picks. So far, defense, they've relied on him, on them a little bit, and, and they've been able to get wins. They're 3-0. So they do have benefit of doubt in terms of referee calls. Sometimes, you know, pass interference goes their yeah. way. But, I mean, they're, they're a champion team, and, and they've been able to figure it out. And I think Mahomes and Kelsey, they've kind of been off. Kelsey has not had much of really any great games this year, so I think they're only going to get more dangerous. Yeah, honestly, with the Chiefs, um, we were supposed to see Hollywood Brown. They yeah. said he had surgery, so he's going to miss a lot of time this year. Mm -hmm. um, him and Ch Travis Kelsey really haven't been on the same page a lot. But honestly, just the Chiefs, uh, this is honestly a testament of what we see from the Chiefs in the regular season. Yeah. They kind of, um, you know, stroll, drag their feet through the regular season. And then once playoff time comes, that's when they really turn up. Yeah. And, you know, and I feel like I don't know if this year, just because if Travis Kelsey doesn't get on board, you know, with the rest of the offense, I do see them struggling in the postseason. But like we've seen, you know, you ride the Chiefs off and then they yeah. prove you wrong. Yeah. So I, I want to say the Chiefs aren't the same team anymore, but, you know, they, they prove that everyone wrong, you know, year yeah. in, year out. Yeah, definitely agree. Um, so I, I agree with a lot of what you guys just said. And um, I want to touch on a few points and ask a few questions. Uh, my first question is, is it safe to say that the Texans are the best team in Texas right now? Damn, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, Cowboys, like, they, they've had, they're like a regular season team. Like, yeah. uh, we've seen what they've done in the regular season. They have great regular seasons. Last year, they had a great defense. But once the postseason came around, we've seen them fall apart. Dak Prescott, it's obviously not on, all on Dak Prescott, but he just got a new deal. Mm -hmm. If you're taking up that much of the cap, you have more of a responsibility. And he just signed a new deal, so I would say Dak has more pressure on himself to perform. Um, last year they had a gr great defense, and then they went to the playoff against the Packers, and mm -hmm. they, they got 50 points put on them. So, I don't know. I would say Texans, honestly. Um, I, I would call the Texans third best team in the AFC behind the Ravens and the Chiefs. Yeah. Um, um, Cowboys, I would, that wouldn't say the Cowboys are third best team in the NFC. Yeah, I mean, I think right now, if, if you were to take it, I would say Texans are yeah. better. And I feel like the Texans are really going to keep getting better. Um, as for the Cowboys, we'll, I mean, we'll see. I mean, it's, it's almost the same thing every year. With them, they perform in the regular season, and then postseason time, it, it, it's a completely different story. So we'll see. I mean, right now, Texans-Cowboys play each other Monday, Monday Night Football in November, so it's going to be a good game. But I would give the edge to the Texans for now. Most definitely. Right. And uh, now let's get into our last topic, the Astros. How are we feeling about them going into the postseason? Um, how, how confident are we? Where's our head? How are we feeling? Uh, yeah, overall, I mean, the Astros, had, I would say they had like an all right year. Um, they started out slow, um, but I feel like that's typical with the Astros. I think they have, to get a, they have to get a better start to the regular season. They did that last year as well. Um, right now they have some injuries going on and um, they have some questions in the pitching staff. So. They got a lot of stuff to figure out. And then they have their last series against the Guardians, but they have a lot of stuff to figure out before the playoffs start um, if they want to make a you know postseason run or a potential World Series. Yeah, you know, I think you mentioned really bad start, 7-19, and um, but this is a championship team. They're still in the middle of their golden era, and, and they're able to figure it out as they usually do. Um, seven straight AOS titles in seven, uh, seven full seasons, four, four straight going back to 2021 and nine postseason appearances in the last decade. So they keep figuring it out. It's remarkable in baseball for them to keep getting this far over and over considering uh, you know, how unpredictable the sport is. Um, they've had players leave, Carlos Correa, um, you know, George Springer, and, and they keep plugging ways. And then you get Jeremy Pena, and you know, this team just you know, keeps finding ways to do it. Kyle Tucker, um, he's back. But you, know, you mentioned the injuries, Jordan Alvarez, you need him. Um, in the postseason because he's absolutely clutch. Um, but this team, they found way a lot of injuries early on, which is why they had a bad start. And, and Joe Spada's first year's manager. Yeah, JV out, Christian Javier, Jose Arquiti, uh, Luis Garcia, McCullers, all of them were out. Bullpen was struggling, but they were able to get it together. And, and the offense found a way. Altuve, another great year for him. Bregman, um, last year of his contract here in Houston, we'll see if he stays. Hit, I think, 27 home runs this year. Pretty good year for him. Um, Ronald Blanco, you know, new pitchers, Hunter Brown, Spencer Arigetti, um, they've been finding ways. And, and I think when you look at the playoffs in baseball as a whole, there's really no team that 
I would think the Astros would be afraid of. You talk about the Yankees, well, they don't perform well against the Astros. We've seen that um, over and over. Um, so I think they can get to the World Series. You need Jordan Alvarez, of course. And as long as that young pitching continues to perform um, the way they have, I, I like their chances um, to be able to make it to eight straight um, American League Championship Series. So um, good thing that they're able to beat the Mariners and then get to this point. So excited for playoff baseball. Really? Um, well, I think that's it. I don't really have any. You kind of set it off for me. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, I guess, you know, shout out D. Rose. He retired today. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Big news today. I'm Colin Avon. I'm Manu Gupta. I'm Kenneth Bowman. And you just watched another episode of Coos Talk. Go, Go Coos.